Hey, right, here's another one. My name is Matt. Oh no. <laughs> I have to read it off an auto cue because otherwise I forget. Uh, so this is a uh, guy called Cerberus. Obviously, if it's not your real name or whatever, I'll just say what it is. So Cerberus asks, why do exhaust butterfly valves for variable back pressure tend to fail and can failure be designed out? Uh, why do they tend to fail? Well, this is the same thing with anything, anything that works in your exhaust. Uh, valves, engine valves, um, pop it valves in your cylinder head. It's usually the exhaust valves um, that go. Uh, not all the time, obviously a lot of intake ones do as well and blah, 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 blah. But generally, if we're just talking life of an engine, it's usually the exhaust valves that tend to diminish very quickly and so on. But, um, oh, what was I going to say? Uh, oh, valves, yeah, no, yeah. So basically, why do butterflies, why do power valves, why do all the rest of it? And it's because of your exhaust environment. So there's a few points to this. Number one being it's hot. Number two, it's hot. And number three, carbon. Right, there are your three reasons why. Number one, it is a hot environment. All chemical reactions, all um, ablation, all erosion, all everything that is um, any kind of abrasive action or anything, generally what we call wear. Right, where increases with temperature, increase in temp. Right, that's just a given. When you used to do stuff at school, I remember when we were at school, we did an ex when you first get into science in like year seven and stuff, they have a beaker and another beaker. You measure out water, you make a hypothesis, all this rubbish. But basically, you have one beaker with uh, a dissolvable aspirin in another beaker in same same setup with three beakers basically and one's cold water one's hot water and one you stir you know what i mean and it's usually the hot water for the dissolvable aspirin that wins out every time just because there's more energy in the system so the other thing about hot is it's not just hot it's very fucking hot which means that on a normal day, just say the average earth temperature being 15 degrees or whatever it is, that going from anywhere between 800 and 500 degrees, 400 degrees in your exhaust system, depending where it is, um, anywhere within this exhaust system, you are going from that kind of temperature back down to 15, back up to fucking 600, back down to 15. You get wet back down to 10, winter down to zero, down to minus 10, back up to whatever. And this fluctuation in temperature, thermal expansion and contraction, um, and literally how that also over time um, changes the material properties, not changes them so all of a sudden it becomes transparent or like glass. It, we're talking locally, so that little bit there, that radius bend starts to relax. Um, other things, ha all sorts of shit happens. Um, so it's the fluctuation. Fluctuation in all of those temperatures. And then the last, the last bad boy is just carbon, right? It's just the grit and shit. The grit and shit. Right, it just gets in mechanisms. It likes to just get in there. And people say, oh, you know, graphite's powders, and I, when it's dry, this is getting oil on it, it's turning into a horrible fucking paste, and it just gums stuff up and causes them to fuck up. Now, with a butterfly valve, obviously, very simple uh, mechanism, you know, fucking nothing to it, really. And this is why, a lot of times, 
just say like um, uh, a DT125, a DT125 or the Yamaha power valve system, right, is cable operated and it has its servo motor somewhere else, <laughs> just anywhere else. Get it away from the hotness, right? Get it away from that shit. Them cables act as really good thermal isolators. You have your bloody fucking power valve over here, and then you have a drum, two pulling cables, cables under tension, and then over here, in a different postcode, <laughs> you have the motor with its two cables, and then this. This big gap here, this big space here of nothing, you know, it's just outside, is a good thermal isolator with cold air. Just, you know, it just keeps it, the, the, the two separated, right? Because this, you want to keep this a very, very simple mechanism. And like I say, all the, uh, let's go here black, all the carbon and shit starts covering stuff and covering bearings and all sorts of shit. And it starts wearing away at the bloody thing so it stops fucking sealing properly and all sorts of shit. <laughs> it's just heat. Heat is a killer. Heat is a killer of mechanisms. Hence why you have a whacking great big fucking radiator on your bike. Now you might not think your radiator on your bike is big. Um, but it is. Not only that is, it's heavy. A lot of people don't tend to think about how heavy your cooling system is. And I'm talking about, just first and foremost, the fucking water, right? It's just heavy. It's two and a half, three kilos of shit you don't need, right? Three kilos, it's a lot of fucking weight, you know what I mean? And then you've got bottles and you've got piping. When you get all your radiator piping and all this kind of shite and all this kind of rubbish all together, you know, it's like, what does this bloody thing weigh? You know, this thing ain't light. This is an intercooler, right? It ain't light. And this is just to cool the air. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it's got these big dickhead pipes on. We'll get to this soon. But yeah, this thing is not light. And yes, it's for a, a car engine, but it's only for, I think it's a 1.8 or a 1.6. It's not out of the realms of mobile stuff. That's just to cool fucking air. That's not the actual radiator radiator. Um, you know, your cooling radiator and stuff. Heat, heat kills everything. Is there a way to de design a way out of it? <sighs> yes, you can basically have a very, very simple mechanism and then have the actual, the guts of the mechanics over there or have it cooled. Again, more cost, stuff like that. Or you make it out of really sexy materials. But the problem with making it out of sexy materials, like, oh, I make it out of Inconel or titanium or something. The problem with stuff like that is, Carbon still gets in there, right? It, it, it just seizes up mechanisms and stuff because it's not just carbon, it's unburnt fuel and fucking oil, which is a slurry. It's a mechanism killing paste, is that stuff. I should fucking sell it. <laughs> All that makes sense. I'll see you in a bit.